This is my 2007 BMW R1200GS. And over the last month, I have resurrected this bike and have been upgrading it on a budget. And in this episode, we're gonna be completing this bike and testing it in preparation for a 3,000 mile journey. If you're new to this series, check out part one here. Alright guys, so on the last adventure, my fork seals decided to start leaking and we can't have that at the start of an epic adventure, so I am rebuilding them the lazy way. That involves removing the fork tubes from the top and using a universal seal puller to remove the seals. You need to take out a dust shield, a retaining clip, and the fork seal. After that, I suck out the old fluid, add new fluid, and install the new seals, and put the forks back, and of course, torque everything to spec. Another quick thing I need to do is relocate the switch for the off-road lights, which only takes a second. And I decided to finally give the bike a decent wash after it survived its very first test. I also wanted to try cleaning the headers with cheap toilet bowl cleaner and soon found out that this brand changed their recipe and didn't use muriatic acid anymore, so it was kind of pointless. Regardless though, the bike was looking pretty dang snazzy. In order to finish this thing, I do need a couple more mods. First one being this $20 bag from Amazon. This one just straps on because this tank is not magnetic. And accompanied with this, it's gonna be a camelback that's gonna fit in here. And the goal with this one is I'm also gonna keep a portable charger, which I will show here shortly, that will be charging in here while I ride, which I can charge my camera batteries with. So this is going to be very useful for me specifically, since I am going to be filming a lot of this. Is there anybody in here? <laughs> Next up, since these crash bars are here, might as well use them. And the biggest thing I'm worried about is running out of gas. So I got this guy. This one was actually from Amazon. It was pretty much the same price as AliExpress and I could get it in like two days. So this one's nice. This is about a gallon, uh, 1.3 gallons, five liters. Gonna mount that on right there and I will have no worry about range anxiety. If I'm off road or anything, I will be good. The biggest reason I'm even worried about it is because my fuel strip has failed on this bike. I don't want to replace the fuel strip because it seems like a waste of money. And I do want to upgrade it to the float style, but it just seems like a lot of money right now onto something that I can track in a different way and be completely fine. Especially after the last trip, I've started to understand how, what kind of miles per gallon this thing's getting. So it's a lot easier to track and I'm you know less worried about it. I mean, I could easily get 180, 200 miles, no problem without stopping for gas and just have to be conscious of it. And then this will allow me to get another 30 miles in terrible conditions. So just, you know, gonna make me feel a little bit better. And instead of spending $600 on an upgraded float system and getting it programmed and everything, I spent 50 and I get to spend that 550 on adventures. That's how I see it at least. That's how this entire modification of this whole bike has been, is if I can save a little bit of money here and it's gonna be good and it's, it will be fine, you know, that hundred bucks or that $50 that I save will then be able to be used on adventures and be able to pay for my gas for the day or be able to pay for my food for the day and, you know, allow me to go on a longer adventure. That's the whole point of this bike. And later down the line, I would love to make this thing absolutely perfect, but right now I just want to go. I just want to get out of the heat and go on a cool adventure, you know? So let's slap this bad boy on. If you had a keen eye, you would have noticed I had this guy in the beginning of the video, mostly just because I forgot to take it off. But I only paid 20 bucks for this. This is a waterproof bag. This one's from AliExpress. And the plan is to keep my tools and emergency supplies in this one mounted right here. This one only takes like a minute to install. So also a pro. I also installed a windshield extender because I'm six foot four and threw on a couple cup holders. Everything will be linked in the description below. It's hot as balls out. Currently, 
in the hood. Rocking some new gear that I will talk about later. Payson's about an hour and 45 minutes away. So this should be an easy one-way ride. Followed a lot of your guys' tips, as you can see. White helmet. Got the camelback on the tank bag here. Shirt is wet. So we're just going to hit it. As some of you have asked, here's a map of the route I will be taking. I've ridden this path many times, so it's not the most interesting to me, especially with the heat. Luckily, I was much more prepared this time, and it really wasn't that bad of a ride. And in no time, I had made it and stopped at a grocery store for food and got a nectarine. I met an older German guy named Richard. He's a pretty cool guy, owns a bunch of older BMW motorcycles and showed me some really cool roads that are nearby and even invited me over to get some brisket or ribs. So I might go check that out real quick. Little did I know that my Insta360 batteries were all dead and I wouldn't realize until a little bit after. Our boy Richard, man, he did not disappoint. I'm so upset that my Insta360 batteries are did not charge. But holy cow, this this is such a cool road, and I would have never turned down here because it's like some weird neighborhood area. This is when things started going downhill. So, uh, my boy Richard gave me some shoddy directions saying, you know, I gotta go here, here, there, and cross a little river and stuff, and then, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't follow, like, any of that. I, I mean, I think I did, and then next thing I knew, I was in a neighborhood, and I go to the end of the neighborhood, and I think everything is good, and next thing I know, on my way out, there's a redneck with a gun standing there, and... He's very aggressive, and uh, I, I'm over here trying to explain that I'm trying to find some random German guy named Richard who invited me to have brisket with no service, no police. That like I, this man could have killed me. I'm I'm in the middle of nowhere, and you know after uh, a while he just said get out of here, you know, and uh, I, I I I did just that. I was like, all right, that's enough of that. You know, I, no, no Richard here. I decided to keep on going down these remote dirt roads and stumbled upon a drunk man washing his dog in the creek who wasn't much help, but at least my Insta360 batteries were somewhat charged. So I set onward. You guys gotta realize at this point, I had ditched my original plans completely, went to a completely unknown place without any service or maps, didn't find my new destination, and now the sun was starting to set and I needed to find a place to camp. Luckily, this area was primarily government land that I could camp on, and I decided to pick a random trail after a while and full set it. I made a lot of mistakes today, a lot of questionable decisions, lost my phone. Uh, I have like an hour till it gets dark, so I'm super happy I found the spot, but I need to get it set up like right now. It was finally time to cook dinner. Nice. It was at this exact moment that I remembered that I forgot to buy tortillas. Why do I keep doing this? I guess I'm making a dip now, because I have chips. At the end of the day, I was seeking adventure and I got what I wanted. Even when things go wrong, you just have to adapt and make the most of it. That's what I did and it all worked out, landing me in a beautiful spot to camp in. Uh, 
So as far as camping trip number two, it went better in uh, many ways, but also went worse in many ways, but learned from, from both sides of it. And number one, this tent fits me. I actually was able to sleep last night, other than some hyenas, like, or I don't know what's here, coyotes. I, I don't know, they were screaming, like, like close by. This chair was like $30. And honestly, this chair is my favorite thing out of everything. It collapses really easily. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. It's super comfortable and it feels like it's gonna last a long time. And I'm a, and I weigh 220 pounds and I'm, I'm 6'4", you know? So like, this is a nice chair, especially if you're a smaller person, would be fantastic. I rate this one five out of five for sure. Oh man, this table, this table, this table. I wanna like this thing, but it's just flimsy and I just wish it was a little bit sturdier for what it is. It does pack up pretty small. Um, I don't know. I like even debate taking it. That's how much I kind of don't really like how flimsy it is. But it provides a cooking surface. Um, and it's just nice to have a table, you know, to put your stuff on. This is a solid three out of five. What I, am I probably gonna use it on the trip? Yeah, realistically. But maybe, I mean, this was only $20, so you gotta like consider, you know, maybe if you spend 30 on a different table, it might be better. Who knows? And then we have the tent. This thing is big. I mean, it's, lo it's long enough for me to fit in it. Um, and I'm 6'4". It's pretty spacious. Like it's, it's just kind of perfect for, uh, it's honestly perfect space-wise. Like everything is just enough. You know, I just fit in it. I have like just enough headroom to sit up in it. I have a little bit of space to put my helmet, boots, some of the gear. I don't really like the zipping method on this one. I do love that it has a screen door. Um, I really need some more time to give it like a solid review. But as of right now, without testing it in the rain and stuff, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. It's pretty good. And you know, I, I would give it a five out of five if it was cheaper just because of value. But um, you know, this one was a little bit more, you know, and you can buy like cheap tents for like 20 bucks, so. We'll see long term how it does. And then we have this solar power bank. I don't know, it's been doing pretty good so far. Uh, this on AliExpress is only 20 bucks, so pretty great value. I ran it all night doing the Star Lab. I charged this thing all the way, two, two full batteries all the way, and I charged my phone to like 20%, and we still have two bars, two indicators left on this power bank, so pretty good. You know, maybe long term, we'll see how it does. It's also got a flashlight built in. Have no idea how to turn it on. It's got wireless charging. It's got all of your chargers built into the back. So pretty good. I think for AliExpress money, it's worth it. On Amazon, these are like 50. This one, also four out of five. I need more testing. The only thing I have left is this sleeping pad. And this was, I think like 35, 40 bucks. Like I said, I'm a big guy. This takes me no time to inflate. I mean, I think I can have it inflated in like 30 seconds and it is still completely inflated as of right now, like from when I pumped it up. It's honestly pretty impressive. I really do like the sleeping pad. Um, ideally, of course, any sleeping pad I wish was thicker, but for the value, for how small this packs up, I mean, it's, it's pretty comfortable. It's tolerable for sure. This one, honestly, I'm gonna rate it five out of five. This is, this is great value. And this is probably the best sleeping mattress slash pad I've ever had that like doesn't deflate immediately. And it's super easy to uh, air up, so. That's it for my quick camping gear review. I got this sweet Dainese jacket from Facebook Marketplace for 40 bucks. Got a little bit of, a little bit of additional touches of, of my own to give it some life. I did buy the pants brand new. Uh, they were like 100 bucks on sale. And then I bought the helmet. And, uh, and I always rock Alpine Star SPA gauntlet style gloves. I have them forever. I bought these boots. Garbage. The Sedici something, Sedici something boots. Where's boots? They, they already broke after one ride. So I don't know, pretty, pretty hot garbage.
Richard had also told me about a waterfall hike in the area, so I made my way towards it with excitement. I met a nice guy named Chase who does jump roping videos on Instagram and allowed me to join him on his hike. Sweat my ass off, I'm ready to go to a waterfall. I was completely unprepared and didn't have much water left, but I thought it was worth the risk. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you and that I really do appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. If you want to see more of something, let me know down below. As always though, I hope to see you at the next one.